thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I'm going to talk about my work in using TLS to estimate the vegetation water content in three dimensions and how to uh, integrate this in uh, data transfer modeling. Uh, so first of all, we need to uh, monitor the vegetation water status to determine the vegetation uh, health. And there are many water status metrics that we can use to quantify the water in vegetation. Uh, the most popular of them is uh, equivalent water thickness or EWD. And this is mainly because it can be linked to the reflectance in the spectral domain and then we can estimate it using uh, remote sensing techniques. Uh, EWD is the amount of water in leaves divided by the leaf surface area and it can be used in early detection of vegetation stress and also detection of diseases and can also be used to estimate another water status metric, the fuel moisture content, which can be used in early detection of uh, water fire risk. Um, basically, we use uh, spaceport sensor satellites to produce maps of EWD distribution. Um, we combine the reflectance from um, near infrared and short wave infrared wave lenses and vegetation index such as NDWI or the normalized difference water index. And then we use this vegetation index to uh, produce an of the water quality distribution. Uh, the problem here is that with uh, space point sensor we can only see the canopy top of the forest. We cannot get enough information about the lower canopy or about the vertical variation of water content in the canopy. We also um, need to collect many leaf samples from the canopy top from many sampling plots that match the pixel size of the satellite in order to calibrate and validate uh, the estimation. So the idea is to use TFS to estimate the water content in 3D and then use these estimates to calibrate and validate the satellite estimation of uh, water content. Uh, the idea is very simple. Instead of using two spectral plans, we use two different TLS instruments. One of them operating in near infrared, and the other one is using a short wave infrared wavelength. So we can combine the two point clouds from the different instruments and then calculate the vegetation index on point by point basis and reduce a 3D point cloud of the water content distribution. So this is just a small uh, part of uh, one of the forest plots that we scanned. Uh, this is the water content distribution on the plot. Uh, blue indicate high water content and yellow indicate low water content. So it, it's still a point cloud. We can get all the structural parameters that we want about the trees. And we can also monitor the uh, forest health at the same time. This is another view of, uh, of the plot, and the average error in uh, the estimation of the water content from TLS in comparison to uh, destructive sampling was less than uh, uh, Here are some of the vertical profiles of water content, and we found that in all the trees we scanned in the forest, the water content was always higher in the canopy top than in the lower canopy. And these were uh, new observations because we don't have any other method at the moment to monitor such vertical profiles of water content and vertical, vertical variation in biochemistry in uh, We can also do uh, 3D change detection, so we can actually see how this is the same tree scanned during a heat wave and two months after a heat wave. And we can actually see how the tree is drying and how the vertical profiles are changing and how the tree is uh, redistributing the resources during uh, dry conditions. And once more, uh, we, this is, uh, we don't have other methods to do this because when we use space for an airborne sensor, we can only monitor the change in water content in the other canopy only. Um, we can also, as I mentioned in the beginning, we need a lot of destructive sampling to validate and calibrate the satellite estimation models of EWD. But with TFS, we can uh, scan as many plots, as many sampling plots as we want. And then we can use these estimates to uh, calibrate the satellite estimation and validate the estimates. Much would be much easier and faster than using the traditional extractive sampling. Um, also, as satellite will be monitoring the open vegetation lens of the canopy top, and with TFS, we can get the vertical profile of water content. We can use this to expand the estimation from satellite data and add more layers to uh, the map. 
So whoever is using the satellite to monitor the forest fields, he can now see the water content in the lower canopy as much as he can see the upper canopy, which might improve the decision making during that conditions. Um, finally, now we have um, the 3D radiative transfer models, which can actually, in which we can actually model the trees and as 3D realistic representation to study the tree structure. Um, uh, but these models always assume that the water content or the biochemistry in the tree is uniform in the whole canopy because this is hard to measure. But now that we can measure these vertical profiles with TLS, we can then integrate it into relative transfer models and simulate a realistic drying pattern of vegetation. Uh, for instance, we used um, CD relative transfer model DART and we reconstructed a virtual forest in the model. And then we uh, integrated the vertical profiles of water content. And we let me, um, first we get um, actual satellite imagery and calculated the vegetation index in the WR from the actual satellite and then from the simulated forest plot. Uh, we tested two different case scenarios. First, we assumed that the whole trees will dry equally and the trees will lose equal water content from all the canopy layers. And we can see here and uh, stress one, we see that NWI dropped significantly and reflected this severe stress. But in reality, in force during drought conditions, uh, usually the lower canopy will dry first and the upper canopy will be the last to dry. So we try to simulate this as well by reducing the water content in the lower canopy and keeping the water content in the upper canopy unchanged to see if the satellites can actually take this change. And we can see here in stress 2, NDWI only changed by less than 10%, which does not reflect the severity of the stress in, um, in the water content in the lower uh, in the lower canopy. Of course, this is just one radio transfer model, and they produce different results, so we still need to cross validate this against other models as well. Uh, so to sum things up. We um, TLS are not only for tree structures, they can also give us information about the biochemistry distribution of trees if we use the correct wavelengths. Uh, we use the mid infrared and short wave infrared wavelengths to monitor the water content in three dimensions. Um, we can use this water content, these water content estimates to validate and calibrate the estimation. We can also do change detection in three dimensions and we can uh, integrate these. Um, vertical profiles of water content into a data transfer modeling in order to uh, better uh, study the drying patterns of vegetation and how they affect the uh, satellites. So that's all, and thank you for listening.